Okay, uh, welcome to the first one of these micro lectures, which are going to be really short lectures, about five or ten minutes long. Hopefully I'm going to keep it under about ten slides. And these are just to give you some background and some context uh, for some of the things we're talking about in this course. Hopefully it'll also help you in other courses. So these are broader concepts, um, hopefully providing some information that you may not regularly get. So we're going to jump right in and talk about the use and abuse of statistics uh, when we're looking at proving things, uh, particularly things in the social sciences. Okay, very often uh, when you look at statistical data, there are three key terms that will come up over and over again. Um, the mean, which is going to be your most common uh, occurrence, your median and your mode. So mean, the way you do that is if you had a data set of nine numbers, and it doesn't have to be numbers, these could be uh, uh, race, or these could be height, or these could be shoe size, doesn't matter. Uh, if you take all of them and add them together, so example there is you have 10, 10, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 90, 200. If you take all those and add them together, you're gonna get 490. You divide it by the number of entries that you have, which is 9. So your mean, your average, is 54. So you've all seen this. If those were your test grades and you needed to know where you were in the class, you would have a 54 average. Median is the middle value, the value between the highest and lowest. So you put those in, and they're already in order from lowest 10 to highest 200. And then you count forward. So let's count forward. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, you get to 30, and back from 200, 1, 2, 3, 4, you get to 40. And then the middle number between those two, 4 up, 4 down, because there's 5, is 35. That middle number is your median. The mode is simply the number that occurs most often. These, uh, and in this, you'll notice that there are two values worth 10, and no other digits repeat. So this, this information is important. Sometimes it's very important that you look at the mean. Sometimes it's very important that you look at what's in the middle. And sometimes it's very important you look at what's the most commonly occurring thing. Okay, so the other thing you have to pay attention to when you look at statistics is where you're getting them from. Now, very often in the uh, analysis of uh, criminal justice data, we start with the uniform crime reports. Now, uh, I, I talk about these in, in lectures. These are basically uh, reports that are filed to the FBI from local police departments. It's been going on since 1920s. The, um, there was a revision. The National Incident-Based Reporting System has revised it somewhat to make it a little bit more robust, a little bit more accurate. But suffice it to say that there are some problems even with this data. First of all, it only tracks some crimes. Not all crimes are tracked. It only tracks crimes that are actually reported so if a crime occurs but we don't know about it, that's not going to help us. And it doesn't classify some acts as crimes. Okay, you also have to be aware that when data is being presented, there can be a bias in the actual presentation. The underlying data can be accurate, can be true. But even factually correct data can be manipulated to present something different. One of the ways you can do this is you don't have to provide all the data or you can omit comparisons or limits of the data. And I'll, I'll give you some examples in a minute. It'll be a little bit clearer there. OK, so we're going to look at the example of crime. Specifically, we're going to look at arrests for murder and non-negligent homicide, according to the UCR, that occurred in 2016. So let's look at this first chart. Um, and I change the title a little bit. You notice I said um, arrests, but I, I omitted that. I simply gave you a chart that said this chart shows that blacks committed 53% of murders and non-negligent homicides. That's not correct. It's, it's a true statement, but it's not correct because these are just arrests. These are not the actual committals. And you notice, see, by omitting the word arrests, you change what's being presented. So if you looked at this chart, you would say, wow, African-Americans committed more than half, and there's your 
mean, median, mode, you'd say, there's your mean, they've committed more than half of all the homicides that occur in the United States. All right, well, let's look at something a little different here and ask, how do you define race? Um, so if I arrest someone, I said, well, I'm going to put him down as black. Um, do I let him self-identify as black? What if he's got multiple characteristics? So what if you had uh, someone whose parents were uh, half Japanese and uh, half from um, Somalia? Okay, would that be African-American? Would it be black, according to the FBI? And that's just the term they use. Would it be uh, Asian? You know, how do we classify it? Also, how do you define murder? What categories does the FBI include or omit in these definitions? What about if we broke this down ethnically? How would that change it? And of course, what's the whole context for statistics in the United States? So, now, the FBI has some data for the ethnic breakdown of homicide arrests for 2016, but here's the interesting thing. The FBI had a reported number of 9,374 homicides, but for only six 1,882 do we know the ethnicity. So if we look at whether someone was Hispanic or non-Hispanic, this is the other way the FBI presents the data, you'll notice that um, about 20% of all crimes are being committed by Hispanics. Well, let's back up here. Where would that be in that chart? Because the FBI doesn't give you a category there on this first chart as to the occurrence. So let me go forward. This other chart I give you is the um, racial and ethnic composition of the United States. And you'll notice there that, at least according to this chart, Hispanics are almost 18, 19% in the United States um, by now. Uh, African Americans about 13%, whites about 61%. So here's some problems behind the numbers, as I was mentioning before. There were, according to the FBI, 9,374 murders committed, but that's only solved data where we have an arrest. The FBI says there was 17,250 um, total murders. So what if you, you were just solving almost all the crimes because of the suspects were African Americans? If they were at a great disadvantage in being caught. So we caught more African Americans, but more whites or more Asians or more uh, Native Americans, if you look at a chart, committed it. That would give you different numbers. Also, remember, uh, of the 9,374 homicides, we only have data ethnically for 6,882 uh, 6, of them, which is just 39%. Also, what did we include? In, we just included murder and non-negligence. If we include workplace deaths, if, if we include deaths that were caused by bosses who, who uh, didn't have safety uh, in mind and their workers were killed, well, we'd have to add another 5,000. And how many of those would change the ethnic breakup or the racial breakup? So those are all some quick questions to think about when you begin to look at statistics and just be aware that they are certainly subject to use and abuse.